we need to talk about Smite's current state. And while this may not be the most Christmassy topic, Harris Stew actually posted today that it is Festivus, which means it's time for airing our grievances. In other words, he was asking for feedback on the current state of Smite. And I think there is a lot to be said about that. That's not talking about an angle of how is Smite doing financially in terms of success, how many people is it reaching or anything like that. That's a topic for another day. Today I want to specifically talk about the issues that Smite is facing from a technical perspective. And for that, let's look at the current patch first, but we will not just focus on the current patch. We'll get to the overarching picture and what needs to happen, in my opinion, afterwards. So. Looking at this patch, I think most people are aware that a lot of things went wrong. At the start of the patch, for example, plenty of people got kicked out of matches after the queue popped and they chose their character and then had to restart their entire game to actually get into the game. It happened to me a few times as well, I didn't have it all the time. So that was already a really bad start where you wonder how that happened. And the strange thing in this regard with many of the issues that I'm going to talk about is that you'd always wonder where they came from because this patch on PTS didn't have those issues. And additionally, it was also not a massive patch in terms of changes to the game itself. The only real major change surrounding the game that we had aside of the introduction of Heimdall was the console cues and keyboard cues, but those really should not cause all these issues. So what are the other issues? Of course, Heimdall has plenty of issues. That's just what it is with a new character. I don't think that's worth going through in detail like yes for example he banishes people forever sometimes and can like lock them in the sky and something that sucks but with a guy like that with such a complex ability that is bound to happen sometimes so that's something i can tolerate there's also the weird thing where he goes invisible in his gold and legendary diamond skins please stop blinking me clips of that i've seen it enough now this must be known to hyrus at this point and i really don't understand why they didn't just go ahead and disable the skins. I don't see why they had to keep them in so people keep noticing this issue. But then outside of Heimdall, there are plenty of other issues. For example, there's a glitch currently that will get you stuck on 50% of your normal movement speed, which happens on Gap and I think Mana and some other with those semi dashes. So that's pretty problematic because there's literally no way to get rid of it if you get this glitch. There is a glitch where on Xbox apparently you don't have items that you can buy and on PC your recommended items completely disappear. On PS4 there are apparently frequent disconnects at the start of the game. On PC there's also a rise of disconnect, especially if you're using OBS to record things. Sometimes when using OBS it will not even let you start the game. And you really gotta wonder what did Hyrus put into their patch that broke OBS? And I did a ton of testing with this. I updated, downgraded my drivers, I updated and downgraded OBS. I, the only thing that worked was switching to DirectX 11 on 64-bit, which then in return causes more crashes. So yeah, fun times. Then in Oceanic, you have Joust lobbies crashing for multiple months now, and that's still not fixed. So there's plenty of stuff going on. You have no backspace in chat sometimes. Your chat can disappear when you're trying to write in lobby and you get uh, accept for something, for example, for a queue. And then you have more things that have been around for ages that still haven't been fixed, like randomly highlighting text or friends list not working properly at all and not showing you your friends and all that stuff. That's been around for so long. So we have this bunch of new issues and this bunch of unaddressed issues. And I find that very frustrating to deal with at this point. If three out of five games that I'm trying to play in a game either have me disconnecting or a teammate disconnecting and then another one of the games just crashes outright, what are you gonna do? How are you even gonna how are you even gonna play the game? How am I going to record gameplay or anything to make content for this game? And I understand that not everyone experiences all of these issues all the time. A lot of it comes down to people having different PCs, different setups, using different software. I'm sure most people are not using OBS while playing Smite. And depending on what you're using and what exact hardware you have, things may go better for you. If you're lucky, you're maybe using a set of hardware that's very similar to the one that Hyrus is using to test their games, in which case you might not experience most of the issues because you're basically replicating their testing environment. There may be issues that are specific to certain servers in certain regions. All that kind of stuff is possible. But we can still conclude that overall there are a lot of issues and a lot of people are experiencing them because otherwise we wouldn't hear so much about them and otherwise a simple tweet posting about them would not get such a massive 
response either or such a massive reaction. Likewise, the report system is still not doing what it's supposed to do. And I know that for a fact now, because I am playing in Oceanic, which is a very small region, which means you will see the same players over and over and over. So if somebody is frequently toxic, it's frequently trolling, it's frequently throwing games, it's frequently dodging games, people will know. And there is one player that stands out, I'm not gonna name and shame here, but every Oceanic player probably knows who I'm talking about, who is known for being toxic, having a massive ego and BMing others all the time, while also trolling consistently, dodging lobbies if he doesn't get his role and making everyone wait again, which in Oceanic meets sometimes you have to wait 15 minutes or something, so he's clearly making everyone's experience worse. Of course, this player has plenty of reports, I'm sure not just from me, but others as well. And at this point, it should have been something that is on Hyra's radar, specifically also because he already had short bans a long time ago. So he would be on his last ban at this point, as far as I'm aware. And even if he wasn't, just from the number of offenses that I've seen from him alone, he would be at a point where he could be banned just for that. But he's not. And uh, sure, I could probably find a way to reach out to someone at Hyrus and be like, hey, this guy is really terrible all the time, really toxic, uh, just making the game worse for everyone in every regard that you can think of. Uh, can you ban them? And I guess that might accelerate the process. But I don't want to do that. I want to use this guy as an example to see if the ban policies that Hyrus has put in place actually work, if their report system actually functions. And I am not seeing anything happening. Now, I know I've discussed parts of these topics in the past, but I think it's very relevant now looking back at Season 6. Because we have an ongoing project called Project Olympus, which started in 2017 with the purpose, with the intent of fixing long-standing issues and smite and addressing things that aren't working as well as they should be. And Parts of the system were very good. Parts of these improvements are in place and are useful. For example, the role choice for conquest, the increase to level 160 is just a bit of a gimmick, but at least gives you something to do, something to look forward to, and some other things that maybe aren't quite as successful, like for example, accommodations, but they're still not bad either. But many of the bigger and more important changes that we were really looking forward to seem to have missed their mark. For example, we have the recommended report now, which honestly doesn't really work very well in my opinion. It's a nice reminder sometimes for people that are toxic that you should report them, but at the same time it's so small that you probably won't even pay attention to it if you're not intending to report someone anyways. And at the same time it still ends up often recommending you to report people that were just underperforming in a game that were not actually feeding and I always feel very very weird seeing that thinking there was basically this promise from the start that this should be relatively accurate after a while to figure out which people actually deserve to be reported and the opposite seems to be the case. We also got the upgrade to DirectX 11 and to 64-bit and I was actually told by Venenu recently that the pro players were specifically advised not to use these versions because they're essentially considered beta versions and are unstable and your game could crash. And mine does exactly that, but again, I kind of have to use it because of OBS. So I kind of got to wonder, like, if you introduce new features that are supposed to increase the performance and stability of your game, then why don't you fully execute that? Why don't you fully look into that and make sure, okay, this is working, this is something that we can provide to the players, to the pro players as well, so they can use it, so they can actually up their game's performance. And sure, those things take time, but these changes were introduced in patch 4.13. That is a long time ago. We are talking two years at this point. Likewise, we have extra things like the high definition texture pack, which I guess is nice if you can run the game on max settings and everything. Most people cannot do that. Even most pros switch down to lower settings, not only because of visibility, but also because Smite's performance just isn't stable enough to run the highest settings in the first place. So who really cares about the high definition texture pack? I actually forgot that it exists in the first place. I, I, I don't know if anyone out there actually uses it. I don't think anyone who records at the same time would consider using it at all. It's just not worth it. And that brings me to my overarching point here. 
I believe that Smite's changes are coming at a good pace at the moment. I think the God releases and other changes to the game, the UI, whatever, pacing wise, they are good. But that doesn't mean that the quality is up to the standards that it should be. And my impression is that the teams for quality assurance and for the UI specifically, for interface and everything, are just too small or are not structured well enough, not organized well enough. Or possibly, I don't want to accuse anyone of that, it could just be the case as well, is that some people on those teams are not quite sure what they're supposed to do, maybe there's not enough communication or maybe they're not doing their job that well. My feeling based on past knowledge about the QA team is that the team is very likely completely overloaded with work and way too small in comparison. I know that definitely used to be the case. I don't know how much that is still true, if Hyrus has upped that, but from all we can see, I can only say it feels like they should up it a lot more. I know too many cooks spoil the broth, but right now the broth is spoiled either way. I think Smite is an incredibly enjoyable game when it works properly, when you have fair matches and when everything else surrounding it is working well. And this experience exists, but it's becoming increasingly rare, so much that I think it's becoming a rarity in itself. It makes me very happy when I see one of those games, because they are definitely not common at this point. So my appeal to hires is please look into those aspects and look how you can improve them and if it means investing more into them, please do it too. Because profits at the end of the day come from new products, but if you have old players jumping off because they can't bear the instabilities and all that stuff anymore, then you'll be making less profits in the long run as well. Not everything should be short term. And with that, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're new to the channel and you want to hear more ramblings of an old man, feel free to click the sub button and maybe the bell. It reels me out, and other than that, I wish all of you celebrated a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. And I'll see you soon, maybe tomorrow, maybe not, depending on if I have time to make a video during the holidays. Duke Sloth, out. <laughs>